Hey everybody, welcome back to Brainiac Baseball's 1981 Detroit Tigers season replay. Today's matchup is between the Detroit Tigers and the Oakland A's at the Oakland Alameda Coliseum. On the mound for Detroit is Jerry Uger making his first career start. And pitching today for the A's is Matt Keough, whose record is 1-3 with an 8.06 ERA. And so he had a terrible ending to the uh, final game of the series against the White Sox. Um, again, we played seven, seven games in a row against them. And uh, the last game, it was all tied at four going into the ninth. And the bullpen, uh, with a couple costly errors from uh, Lance Parrish, um, just imploded the game. They put another 10 spot on the board. Back-to-back -back 10 runs uh, being scored by the Sox, and uh, so we're going to Oakland to face the A's, a team that we've made a couple of deals with. Um, they are looking a lot better than they did last year. Uh, they are 10 and 13 right now, and um, they, you know, I mean, their batting average is below the league average. Their home runs are a little higher, and uh, their ERA is a little bit higher. So they're still got a little ways to go, and maybe we can take advantage of that today. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what happens with Jerry uh, Uger. I've never used him before, so uh, this will be the first time, uh, at least with him uh, starting. Because we he did have one relief appearance of 1.1 innings there. So uh, we could have skipped him and went right to Jack, uh, but you know what? Let's just try to stay on pace um, and uh, use our five-man rotation. So uh, Keith Comstock will not be available. He pitched really well yesterday. And uh, Roger Weaver, uh, although he was um, the recipient of a couple of errors, uh, he still hasn't um, given up any runs. And so the, that lefty and that righty right there are not available today. So uh, Uger is going to have to go a little bit deeper one way or another. And uh, we're going to give Gary Hancock a day off. Uh, we haven't done that yet this year. So this will be his first day off. Uh, as far as a, a starting goes, and uh, Omar Marino is going to play right field today. And the rest of the lineup is the same. And so uh, we're, we'll go ahead and do the uh, lineup rundown here for the Tigers. And uh, the there's really not much background history to give on um, uh, Jerry Uger. Just out of, you know, interesting note is uh, he was... He, he went to University of Minnesota uh, at the same time that Paul Molitor was there. So they were teammates um, at the University of Minnesota. Uh, but, uh, you know, we're playing at the Oakland Alameda County uh, Coliseum, and I lived in Oakland for a few years. I had season tickets in uh, 2001. So I'll probably give a couple stories uh, about my um, experiences at the Oakland Alameda uh, County Stadium. So... At any rate, um, leading off and playing center field today is Ricky Henderson. Batting second and playing shortstop is Alan Trammell. Batting third and DHing is Kirk Gibson. Batting cleanup and in left field is Steve Kemp. Batting fifth and at first base is Jason Thompson. Batting 6th and catching today is Lance Parrish. Batting 7th and at 3rd base is Wayne Gross. Batting 8th and in, at 2nd base is Lou Whitaker. And batting ninth in right field is Omar Marino. On the mound for the A's is Matt Keough. Um, we've covered him before last year. Uh, he's not that uh, interesting of a fella. Um, I do believe that he is related to Riley Keough, the singer, though. I, I think it's his niece, but I could be wrong about that. I'll, I'll have to look that up and put it in the notes. Anyway, um, he's 1-3 with an 8.06 ERA, 19 walks with uh, 12 Ks. Opponents are batting 342 against him. He did walk a lot last year. Um, he was 10-18, and, and of course, this was a, our simulated season. But in 1979, he was 2-17, and 17, and that's with, um, I believe that's with Billy Martin as the manager. Billy Martin was the manager in 1981 of the A's as well. And so, 
Uh, let's go ahead and get this game started. Here is Ricky Henderson uh, leading off. He had uh, two stolen bases in yesterday's game as he hits it into left center field and it's uh, tracked down by the left fielder Tony Brewer. Batting second here is Al Tra Alan Trammell with uh, one down. He strikes out. So there's a K for Keo. That's going to leave it up to Gibby. And Gibby rips it to right. He is on a tear. Oh, that's going to be caught by the right fielder, uh, Larry Murray. And so we'll go to the bottom half of the inning. Here is the lineup rundown for the A's. Batting first and playing right field is Larry Murray. Batting second and at second base is Shooty Babbitt. Batting third and at third base is... Kevin Mitchell. Batting cleanup and catching is Ed Putman. Batting fifth and in left field is Tony Brewer. Batting sixth and DHing is Carlton Fisk. Batting seventh and at shortstop is Tony Phillips. Batting eighth and at first base is Royal Stillman. And batting ninth in center field is Rusty McNeely. And here's Jerry Uger, as I mentioned. Not a lot of information on him. Uh, he did make one appearance this year in relief, uh, going one in the third innings. Pitch, pitched decently. In uh, AAA, he had three starts this year. It was 2-0 oh with a 1.23 uh, ERA. And so uh, when Bruce Robbins got injured, he was a natural choice to uh, be the fifth starter on the team. So uh, batting leadoff is uh, Larry Murray. We talked a, a lot about him last year. He's actually Eddie Murray's uh, older brother. And he gets a line drive into right field. Looked like it was off the wall, but it's going to be caught by uh, Omar Marino in right. And uh, next up is Shooty Babbitt. This is a manufactured card. As uh, Uger walks Babbitt. So he will be followed up with Kevin Mitchell, also a... Uh, cr uh, create a card for this season and Kevin Mitchell gets a base hit to left I believe he's only 19 years old in this game yeah and then the left fielder Kemp makes an error that's seven errors now uh, in the last two games plus so not great first and third now for Ed Putman uh, former Detroit Tiger we traded him over here and as you can see Jeremy did a great job of taking the uh, Ed Putman card we already had and uh, placing a uh, A's cap on him, giving him a little uh, gold necklace there. Um, you know what? We're going to pull the corners in. Maybe we could turn two. Who knows? Oh, he's going to strike him out. Uchu strikes out Putman. So two down for Tony Brewer, also a manufactured card. And a ground ball to Trammell. It's short. And that's going to do it. So uh, we go to the top of the second. Steve Kemp leading off. He had that error as he gets a, uh, hits a line drive to center field. And McNeely makes the catch. One down. Next up is JT. And he strikes out looking. Two Ks for Keough. And here's Lance Parrish. He's just been terrible defensively. He hits a high fly ball to center field. That's going to be caught for the third out. Yeah, he had uh, three errors in yesterday's game. He had two errors the day before. His fielding percentage for a catcher is at 943. Um, and his stolen base percentage has improved. It's up to 23%, but not great. Here's Carlton Fisk leading off the uh, bottom of the second. Of course, he was a Tiger. Uh, almost all of last year, as uh, he started out on Boston, was traded to Detroit, and then uh, we traded him in the offseason. That's how we got uh, Wayne Gross. So Fisk grounds to second base. It's going to bring up Tony Phillips, and Phillips hits a ground ball to short. That is the second out. Next up is Royal Stillman in his manufactured card. And he hits a ground ball to short. So no score if you go to the top of the third. 
Wayne Gross leading off. Gross uh, started yesterday's game, but he had a couple days off in a row before that as he flies out to left. So one down for Whitaker in the eighth spot today. He gets a ground ball to third. Kevin Mitchell guns him down. That's two down. Here's Omar Marino batting 378 versus righties. He gets the Tigers' first hit. Do we want to go for two? Yes, we do. Yes, there we go. Double for Marino. In uh, his part-time duty, I think he leads the Tigers in doubles with like nine. Ricky Henderson's up next. He's going to bloop it into left center field, and it doesn't fall in. It's going to be caught by Brewer in left. And we go to the bottom of the third. Rusty McNeely leading off. Manufactured card. And uh, he's taken over for Ricky in center field. Strikes out. Two Ks for Uger. Back to the top of the lineup with Larry Murray. And Murray walks. Wow, he's got 96 speed. So runner on first for Shooty Babbitt. And Babbitt is going to get an infield hit to short. And uh, Uger's got himself into a little bit of a predicament here. Kevin Mitchell's up next, and he walks him. And so we got a, uh, a slow base runner with Mitchell, and uh, Putman is also uh, low in speed. So maybe we can turn two here with a ground ball. Oh, he's going to pop it up. Any chance Parrish will actually catch it? Yes, he does. Oh, it's caught by uh, Thompson. There you go. Sure-handed. So two out. Bases are still loaded here for Tony Brewer. Oh, that's a grand slam. No! No! Come on. That is not fair. So I think that's the first grand slam of the year uh, for us or the, our opponent. So... Uh, on that level, I suppose that's something. And Carlton Fisk hits a uh, grounder to Thompson, and that's going to do it for the inning. 4 nothing on the Grand Slam by, um, by uh, Brewer. That's his fifth home run of the year. So here we are, top of the third, leading off is Trammell. Trammell hits a ground ball to short. Next up is Gibby. There we go. Gibby gets a base hit. Gibby is just torrid this first month. Batting 373 right now. So runner on first for Steve Kemp. Kemp is going to shoot it into right center field. Looks like it's cut off and the runner is Gibson. Do we want to try to get him on the board? 90% chance and Gibby is safe at home. And uh, Gibson, I mean, uh, Kep moves up to second base. So that is uh, the first run of the board. It's four to one. Kemp is on second. Here is JT. And they walk Thompson. So one swing away from tying this game up with Lance Parrish. And Parrish hits a ground ball right to second. And that's an easy double play. So we're going to the bottom of the fourth. Switch hitter Tony Phillips leading off. Uh, so as I mentioned, I, I did live in Oakland. Uh, I lived uh, three subway stops from the stadium. And uh, the second year that I lived there, um, I had a job working for a computer company, a British computer company. And I thought if I bought season tickets, not only could I go to the games I wanted to, but I could give some tickets away to clients. So I bought a se uh, you know two season tickets. Um, it was on the third base side, um, like maybe about three quarters away up. And uh, so, as it turns out, that was the Moneyball year where um, the A's won 103 or four games or whatever it was. But that was, unfortunately, that was the year that Seattle won 112 or whatever. It was a lot of wins. 
And so that was a very exciting year. That was also Ichiro's first year uh, in Major League Baseball. And uh, I saw him, I was at the game where he threw out Terrence Long at third base from uh, about, the, about the corner of the right field fence on the line. Didn't hop at all. And uh, that was pretty exciting. And of course, that year was the year that uh, Derek Jeter in the playoffs did the uh, backflip and uh, Jeremy Giambi didn't slide. I was there for that game. And then uh, the next game of the playoffs was the, the game where uh, Miguel Tejada ran past a third base coach to score and he was thrown out by a mile. And uh, that cost us, I think that was game five. So I saw some pretty good events that year uh, as uh, Marino is the uh, third out going to the bottom of the fifth. It's four to one. It was a good time. Um, I really enjoyed that season. I got to meet Billy Bean at the um, the spring meet and greet, I guess. And uh, so that was cool. And uh, by the end of, uh, I knew I was going to be leaving uh, in 2002. So I didn't get season tickets that year, but um, I did go to a few games sitting out here in the bleachers um, as uh, Shooty Babbitt gets a base hit fourth hit against Uger. One down, Babbitt at first. Kevin Mitchell flies out to right. It's going to bring up Ed Putman. And Putman hits a lazy fly ball to the left. And that'll be the third out. We're going to the sixth. Four to one A's. We're going to switch it over to the in-game stats. Um, nobody in particular for the um, player of the game yet as Henderson hits it the other way it's going to be caught for the first out one down for Trammell Trammell hits a fly ball to the left of course uh, Oakland Coliseum has um, the largest foul ground in Major League Baseball so uh, typically um, batters are about uh, it's 20% more likely to get an out there. Um, or it lowers your batting average by a certain percentage. So um, that's a fly ball by Gibson. That's another 1-2-3 inning. I, for some reason, we can't beat a 2-17 and 17 pitcher. So here's Brewer had that grand slam in the third inning. He hits a ground ball to first. You just kind of settle down. As Fisk hits a ground ball to short. There's two outs. I'll leave it up to Tony Phillips. Phillips hits a ground ball to short. We go to the top of the seventh. Keo is only at 66 pitches. We're not working the counts here. As Kemp hits a ground ball to second. Next up is JT. He strikes out. Four Ks for Keo. Gonna bring up Parrish with two down. He strikes out. Wow. Five Ks for Keo. Only three hits. He's still looking strong. Uh, this would be a good inning to uh, take out uh, Uger with um, two lefties and a switch hitter coming up. But uh, you know we're gonna let him. We're gonna let him pitch. See what happens as Stillman bloops it into right center field. That's gonna be caught by Marino. So one down for Rusty McNeely. McNeely pops it up. Uger officially listed as tired. And I think he's got one more batter in him at least. Here with uh, switch hitter Larry Murray. Oh, he strikes him out. So that's probably going to do it for uh, Uger. Other than the big blast, um, he's pitched very effectively. So top of the eighth. Wayne Gross leading it off. He hits a fly ball into center field. It's caught for the first out. Here's Whitaker 0 for 2 on the day. 2 for 7 lifetime versus Keo, And he flies out to left. And that'll leave it up to Marino. He has the only RBI today. Oh no, I guess Kemp had that RBI. That's right. My bad. 
And uh, that's going to do it as he grounds to third. We're going to yank out uh, Uger. Good job by him. Um, it says 8.1 innings pitched. What am I missing? How is that possible? Is that foreshadowing? Um, let's see here. We're going to bring in Bob Stanley. We're down three. We'll bring in... Uh, what about Bob? Uh, this is his 11th game. 5.54 ERA. He's pitched much better of late. Still got more walks than strikeouts. And he's got a save. So, Bob Stanley into the game. Shooty Babbitt. Leading off the bottom of the eighth. Stanley strikes him out. One down. Here's Kevin Mitchell. Mitchell rips it down the left field line. Oh, it's only a base hit. As uh, Kemp must have got to it quickly. So one down for Ed Putman. Putman strikes out. He's having a bad game against his old team. 0 for 4 with 2 Ks. So two down for Tony Brewer. Oh, who was stealing there? Kevin Mitchell tried to steal second base, and Parrish gunned him down. So we're going to the top of the ninth, and we have the top of the lineup. Keo still in there. Not even close to 100 pitches. And he, man, he just blows it by uh, Henderson, and that's kind of an exaggeration. His fastball is an 84. It's all about location. There's one out. Here's a Trammel. Oh, he drills Trammel right in the hip. So runner on first. We're not going to hit and run. We just need to get some, some rallying going. Oh, he hits back-to-back -back batters. Uh, how often do you see that in this game? Not very often. So this is the right guy to have up. Steve Kemp, he's well due for a home run. He's only got one uh, homer on the year. Oh, he pulls it down the right field line. We'll take that. A run scores. That's two RBIs for Kemp. And uh, he's on path to be the player of the game. So that's four to two. First and second. We're going to hit and run. You know what? Actually, Kemp is the go-ahead, uh, the tying run. So we're going to bring in a speedster. We're going to bring in uh, Tommy Brookins. First and second. Uh, we're going to hit and run with uh, JT. I mean, first and third, one out. And he hits a ground ball to second. That is going to score the third run as Keo's at 98 pitches. And we're going to ask Parrish to do something that I think he's not really capable of doing. And let's get a base hit at a clutch spot. A wild pitch moves Brookins to third. They are just teasing us. I can feel it. So it's a 1 0 count. Two down. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I can see that coming a mile away. Tigers lose. Four to three as Parrish strikes out. Oh, there's a trade offer here. John Stearns, a catcher, making a shit ton of money for a couple of relief pitchers. And um, that's going to be a big deal. Man, what a bummer. Uh, we lose 4-3 to three in the uh, first game of the series. Let's take a look at the standings. We're 13-12. and 12. We can't get anything going here as uh, we fall to five games back. Baltimore is just coming out of April, firing on all cylinders. Um, St. Louis and Cincinnati. Uh, Cincinnati, uh, Houston's closing the gap on the Reds. Take a look at transactions. Nothing of note. We talked about Dave Collins out for a year and yesterday. We're going to pull up the box score and get out of here. Kind of a disappointing game, although uh, Uger pitched fantastic. Uh, other than the Grand Slam, uh, you know, take that off the board and we win. But that's not how it works. Uh, yeah, Omar's got his eighth double. Kemp has uh, his third double. We're going to give the player of the game to Steve Kemp, uh, who's uh, two hits and two RBIs, at least gave us a chance, and his error didn't hurt us. Uh, yeah, so Uger is 0-1. Uh, Matt Keogh gets the win. He looked indestructible. He was 2-3 uh, and three on the year. 
and Tony Brewer with the granny. And that's going to do it. We're going to come back tomorrow with game two of the series. Until then, everyone, have a great day.